Hi guys, Ollie here and welcome to the first video in this cardiology series. I finally managed to set up a decent whiteboard tutorial rig and teaching is something I really want to focus on this year. So please let me know what you think. This first video is simply going to be an overview of the cardiac conduction system. Many of you will have covered this at A level if you're in the UK or high school abroad and it's just a reminder of everything we need to know so that we can begin start understanding the electrophysiology of the heart and reading ECGs. Let's make a rough sketch of the heart muscle here, and don't worry, we'll cover the anatomy in more detail another time. What we've got here is a cross-section in the coronal plane through the myocardium approximately halfway through. I've labelled some of the major features just so you can orient yourselves as to where we are. As you'll remember, everything begins with the sinoatrial node, a cluster of special cells sat in the upper wall of the right atrium in a site called the sinus venarum. This node is special because it can spontaneously depolarize and produce electrical activity, and the speed at which it does that controls our heart rate, which is around 60 to 100 beats per minute in an average person. But the question then becomes, how does it know how fast to make our heart beat? For example, sometimes we need a faster heartbeat if we're active and exercising, or maybe we're anxious, and sometimes it needs to be slower if we're resting. This is controlled by the autonomic nervous system through sympathetic and parasympathetic fibres. Sympathetic supply comes mainly from the T1 to T4 spinal nerves, and it uses the noradrenaline neurotransmitter. These nerves make a heart beat more quickly, which we call positive chronotropy. If the heart beats too fast, we call this tachycardia, or fast heart. Parasympathetics do the opposite and slow the heart down when we're at rest. Parasympathetic supply to the heart actually comes all the way from the brain via the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, and it uses acetylcholine to cause negative chronotropy and lower the heart rate. Again, if it gets too slow, we call this bradycardia, or slow heart. So now that we understand how the sinoatrial node works, it's going to fire off a signal to depolarize the atria and allow them to contract together and fill the ventricles with blood. This signal travels via three pathways known as the internodal tracts. The anterior tract, the middle tract, which we also call Venkibach's tract, and the posterior or thorals tract, which all culminate together at the atrioventricular node. There is a branch of the anterior tract which loops backwards to the left atrium, which is how the right and left atria know when to contract together. Now we're at the atrioventricular node, which sits near the interatrial septum, right next to the coronary sinus. And this is the key step which electrically connects the atria and the ventricles. Having received the signal from the sinoatrial node, the atrioventricular node purposefully halts the signal chain by approximately a tenth of a second, which gives the atria time to empty properly into the ventricles, which means they're nice and full by the time they contract. You might find it interesting to know that if any of the conduction before the AVN isn't working properly, it can actually take over as the pacemaker for the heart, and will fire at 40 to 60 beats per minute, a bit slower than the SAN. So now from the atrioventricular node, we need to head into the ventricles, which we do via the bundle of Hiss. This runs down the interventricular septum, splitting into the left and right bundle branches. The left bundle further subdivides into the anterior and posterior fascicles, which track down to the apex of the heart. Finally, these fascicles give rise to the Purkinje fibres, which come up through the subendocardium to supply the walls of each ventricle. When the electrical activity reaches this point, it depolarizes the walls of the left and right ventricles, allowing them to contract in a synchronized way from the bottom to the top, and eject blood to the body and the lungs. As before, these fibres can actually depolarise by themselves if the earlier conduction system is compromised, and they'll do this at 15 to 40 beats per minute. But this is very much the last resort of a significantly struggling and damaged heart. The last thing to note here is that this entire conduction system is encased by a fibrous skeleton, which insulates it from the rest of the heart, and also separates the atria and the ventricles from each other meaning the only pathway connecting them is via the atrioventricular node. So there we go guys, there's a brief summary of the cardiac conduction system and everything that you'll need for medical school. I'd really appreciate it if you took two minutes to fill out the feedback form that goes with this video, which is linked down in the description, it just lets me know what I can do better next time. 
And if you do that, it gives you access to a worksheet as well as an Anki deck containing all the revision materials you'll need for this topic. Be sure to hit that like button for me guys, leave a comment, subscribe and go and check out postgradmedic.com for more free videos just like this. Take care and I'll see you next time. Thank you.